So, uh, Excellencies, board members, colleagues, species, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I also stand on the protocol that has already been established because of time. I'm going to be brief, but I also have a task of, uh, you know, boring you with uh, repetitions of what is happening in Uganda, considering that Kenya seemed to have uh, picked my document and delivered it to you. So please bear with me, but I'll try to be very fast. So as uh, we all uh, realize that uh, innovation and technologies it's very important for us to attain and achieve our sustainable and development goals, but also our national development frameworks. So what I'm going to speak about are just a few examples of what Uganda has done in terms of uh, data, innovation, communication, and technologies. And the first thing that I want to mention is uh, ICT is an integral part of Uganda's national development plan. And uh, ICT is uh, being used in all different spheres of life, including education, within the health sector, within the economy to improve uh, employment, e-payments, e-commerce, e-trade, e-governance, and all other uses that can transform the society. And as such, government has, it is struggling. Uganda is struggling but it has formulated several policies and guidelines to ensure a rapid expansion and uh, use of uh, information, communication, and technologies. And Uganda is working towards expanding the infrastructure and services, but as of uh, 2023, only about 63.8% of our population had mobile phone subscriptions, and was still internet access is as low as 4.3%. And uh, if we are talking about innovations, we cannot innovate without technology. So let me now share what is happening in the country. In terms of e-governance, which is important for us to be able to assess how financial resources are being, um, you know, Utilized, is it effective use? Is it, we talk about corruption in so many of our countries, but there is an ICT innovation drive in Uganda, which has led to development of various solutions to support the digitalization of government services across the public sector. Some of these I'll just mention, for example, uh, all the Sustainable development goal indicators have been integrated into the national standards indicator framework. And this helps us track performance uh, on a routine basis. But in terms of health, Uganda has initiated the integrated health management system. And the integrated facility and health management information system was developed to provide all-round solution to managing processes at public health facilities. And this system was commissioned and deployed in all national and regional referral hospitals, but it is now being, you know, scaled down to the lower health facilities. Then in terms of uh, accountability and how money is being utilized, money for service delivery is being utilized, Government has established what we call a parish development model information system. The parish development model is an in integrated system that is supposed to support promotion of service delivery, community mobilization, and also financial inclusion within the, the, within the delivery of services. So what happens is government releases money to a parish, and a parish is responsible for identifying how to use that money. Whether it, you spend the money on education or on health or in ensuring that communities get information, it is all up to the uh, parish. But importantly, government tracks expenditure on this money 
through this parish development model information system. And this improves, you know, efficiency in the utilization of government resources. Then in terms of uh, communication, we have what we call the caucus anywhere. And caucus anywhere is an online elaboration platform that was developed to provide virtual environment for education institutions to conduct classes and also operate as a collaborative environment for meetings and events. And this system is currently in use at different government teaching institutions and also in some of our schools. And in some of our schools, it is scaling up because not all the schools have an IT system. So that is why there is that delay. Then in terms of uh, innovations in the health system, most of it has been said here, but we are aware that ITC has led to uh, transformation to help strengthen and complement existing echo data systems. And we now have a more functional DHIS2. We have a more functional health management information system. And we also do ICT to monitor and uh, undertake surveillance. An example that I could give is the Global Fund Supported Innovative Solution, which has led to transition from paper to electronic health records and e-registers. So anyone with uh, malaria, TB, or HIV is captured within that electronic system and all information is available. And whether you have seen um, the doctor and how you're picking the drugs and when you're supposed to come back and for a checkup, all this is institutionalized within this electronic system. Then we have the ICT to empower communities for social behavior chain communication and campaigns are being run through the social media integration. Then in terms of uh, ensuring that we have adequate commodity security for our health services, the National Medical Stores has also strengthened data warehousing, data market creation, and visual analytics, making it possible to know where communities that health facilities have ordered are within the logistic management information system. And uh, because of this very good um, system, Uganda has continuously hosted a number of countries from the region to learn how this particular system is operating. Then, um, in terms of addressing our maternal mortality ratio that has been uh, really high, Ministry of Health instituted the data-supported maternal and perinatal data surveillance and response in health facilities, and it ensures that local leaders and communities participate in addressing the common causes of maternal and perinatal deaths. Chairperson, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the innovations that the Ministry of Health believes has contributed very strongly to the rapid reduction of maternal mortality ratio in Uganda, because I'm sure many of you who were present when my minister was speaking, maternal mortality ratio declined from 336 to 189 per 100 life, per 100,000 live births in a period of seven years. I just want to talk about, uh, I'm not going to talk about the census, but there's been innovation in using uh, ICT for conducting the census. We have also had uh, a number of innovations because we are all aware censuses are conducted every after five years, but we had the performance monitoring and accountability for FP 2020 which was giving us uh, family planning, you know, it was tracking the family planning indicators every year. So this performance monitoring and uh, accountability to us was an innovation to keep informing us on how we are faring in terms of our total fertility rate, our contraceptive prevalence rate, the unmet need for family planning, and it was a wonderful innovation. Then in terms of uh, population, the National Population Council has established a population data bank, and we hope this is going to strengthen all the different data indicators, population data, 
that we need to track on a regular basis. And this is also a, a real-time uh, kind of innovation where data is picked and included within the system on a regular basis. Ladies and gentlemen, due to the stagnating teenage pregnancy rates in the country, we had an opportunity to visit Bangladesh in 2018 to learn how uh, this country was able to reduce the teenage pregnancy rates. And following this, we are still struggling because the teenage pregnancy rate is stagnating at 25 or 24 percent in Uganda for the last almost 20 years. But what the Ministry of Health has decided is to establish a teenage pregnancy audit. And this teenage pregnancy audit is also a data system that is built around a parish development model. And we want to understand what is it that is happening within the communities and we are failing to address the teenage pregnancy. So these are some of our examples, but I would also just want to share that in terms of uh, our economic development, we have uh, several youth skilling IT solutions that are supposed to improve entrepreneurship. And this aim at uh, equipping the youth with the uh, right practical knowledge and skills to enable them provide innovative you know, IC solutions for them to be able to you know, contribute to income generation, wealth creation, but also to the growth of the economy. And lastly, it will not be fair for me to leave this podium without applauding UNFPA and the support that we are receiving because the country office has supported the digital solution app that provides information in HIV, sexual health, gender violence, and allows communities to access nearby health services and information. This also promotes real-time monitoring nationally, but also at subnational level through dynamic mapping of key indicators, instant visualization of maps, graphs, charts and relevant statistics in easy and user-friendly forms, and it has enabled districts to generate district-based profiles and briefing documents for evidence-based advocacy and planning at the different levels. Lastly, data and uh, IT are very important for us, but it still comes with a number of challenges in terms of data quality, accuracy, integration and coordination, but also ensuring that we are actually embracing the timely data for planning, for programming, for advocacy, and for ensuring that we are achieving the goals and objectives within our national development frameworks. Thank you very much for your attention, and I submit.